All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, please. Uh, so maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Any one of us can lead. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we're about to have. God, we pray that uh, everything that we learn today, uh, we will apply it in our lives so that we can be a blessing to others. Help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and understand your deep truths, Jesus. I pray for all my classmates. We bless Pastor Paul. In the name of Jesus, be with us and guide us throughout the session, Lord. And give us good Wi-Fi connection so that we cannot be distracted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So last week, uh, we were talking about leadership. And, you know, we covered some very important points. You know, uh, as a leader, we need to see it uh, before you can lead people into it. And most importantly, three uh, hard attitudes uh, for godly leadership, which is servanthood, passion, and self-control. And these are some things that we must always keep a check on ourselves. Uh, I mean, as we do that, maintain proper uh, people skills. Uh, you, know, you know, as a head uh, or as a leader, we need to be right. Only then the body will be right. Demonstrate and empower people. Be real. Be down to earth. Uh, your attitude either wrecks or invigorates people. So uh, have a right attitude uh, going through all of this. Uh, and be a good leader, meaning lead by example. Oh, get the facts right. Oh, so I think we stopped here uh, getting the facts right and then act. So let's continue from here. Just a few more points and then we'll get into the next chapter. Get the facts first, then act. Right? Uh, every prudent man, Proverbs 13, 16. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. Right? Now, as leaders, sometimes we depend on our gut feeling. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that word, right? Have a gut feeling that this person can be, you know, for example, a good leader, or uh, have a gut feeling that this conference that we or this new thing that we're going to start is going to, you know, be uh, do well. So leaders have that instinct, right? That gut feeling. But it's also very important to get certain facts right. Gut feeling is good. Right? Uh, but also, uh, as you have that gut feeling, do the work of preparation. Right, uh, get facts right. Right. So, for example, if you say you, you know, just just an example, right? If you have a gut feeling that you know, uh, uh, for example, you know, in our nation there are certain parts where uh, you know ministry is not very easy. So, for example, you have a gut feeling that God is calling you to move from one part of a city to a place where there is high persecution to do ministry. That's a wonderful feeling. There's 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 this feeling of uh, you know a, a zeal to do something for the Lord too. There's also these go through these mixed emotions, the calling of God. But it's it's also important to. Uh, Get facts first. Get ready for what you're going to do ahead, right? So, if you're going to another city, you need to get the facts right. You need to ensure that you know what's happening. Use data that's available. Think right. Think think intuitively. Uh, you know, get certain facts. Is it is it all right to start at this time? What what are the culture of the people? How many things, right? So, especially when you're starting a new organization. Uh, and it's new territories, new ground, get certain facts right. right? Uh, uh, now, it could be a small decision. Uh, for example, it would be something just moving uh, a church location from one place to another. Uh, still, you know, uh, it's important to get facts, right? Uh, then we also talked about this, giving honest feedback. Right? Proverbs 28, 23, correct someone, and afterward, he will appreciate it more than flattery. Now. This is this is very important as leaders, giving honest feedback. And now, when we say honest, it's not only uh, you know it's not only the good things that the person does, 
Now, if you and I want to raise up good leaders, we must be able to speak into their lives and give them honest feedback. Uh, don't assume that people know what you expect from them. Tell them. Right? Uh, and giving honest feedback will help people in the areas where they are falling. Right? Uh, uh, you know, and this communication or this confrontation sometimes may not be received well. Uh, that's not in your hands. But as a leader, part of your responsibility is to give honest feedback. Now, I've given feedback to many, many, many people, right? Uh, there are some who taken it in a good sense. There are some who said, hey, how can you tell me this? It's OK. Right? Now, some of them have not responded to it. But as a leader, we must give honest feedback. Now, as we give honest feedback, uh, that correction and feedback should be timely, right? Give it when you notice it. Or shortly thereafter, meaning don't wait for one full year and say, okay, uh, you know, last month, last uh, six months back, <coughs> now in December 2022, this is the mistake you made. And the person you're giving feedback to is be wondering, December 2022, uh, now it's what it's going to be April. So so first thing that so for example if somebody is giving me a feedback about something that's happened like four or five months back or a year back i'm only going to think hey as a leader you should have told me that immediately right uh, providing timely feedback also is very important uh, connecting themselves immediately and when they when when we give those timely feedbacks you will see that uh, people will be, you will see improvement in what they are doing now, it's not that I've only given, but I've received plenty of feedback. Plenty of feedback. Do this, do this, do this. Uh, these are some things that you can improve on. These are some things that you need to work on. And I'm glad that we have leaders who could you know, speak into our lives, give us honest feedback. And uh, because of that, we're able to get better in what we are doing. Right? Uh, now, as leaders, as you give honest feedback, Never criticize people. And is, so when we give feedback, don't criticize them. Don't bring them below. Don't make them feel that they're not good enough. Right? Always, honest feedback should encourage them, should build them up, right? never to bring them down. Right? So, so for example, there's somebody who's preaching in the church. And he may be a young youth who's just 20, 21 years old. And you give him an opportunity to probably preach in the Bible study or in the small groups, and he preaches. But uh, he, you know, you feel that you've done that he's not done well. Uh, you give him honest feedback, but you don't criticize. You never say, "Hey, uh, you're not good enough." Or you uh, next time I won't give you. No. It's how we give the feedback. And in the end of that feedback, it should be that the person is encouraged, or he he's he's you know he's encouraged to correct himself and learn more and grow what he's doing, he or she's doing. Don't waste your words on the inattentive. Uh, Proverbs twenty five twelve, a warning given by an experienced person is when gold rings or jewelry made by the finest gold. Now, Correction, sharing of knowledge, experience is is, is very good, uh, and and people who are willing to listen, it they they really grow in in whatever they are doing. But if people are unwilling to listen, if people are unwilling to learn, if they are unwilling to develop themselves and say, hey, no, this, I will do it my way only. Don't waste your time. That uh, didn't waste your time and effort. Save it for people who are willing to learn. Right? Uh, uh, sometimes people need to learn the hard way. Right? I always uh, it's not to not to ridicule, uh, but I always remember this. You know, when when we joined Bible college, uh, and, I, and I remember, you know, 
uh, all of them who came were pastors' children. Most of them, right? They were all pastors' children. So you know, they're used to the church, and you know, they they the pastors have sent them. And for me, I left a corporate job and I joined the Bible college. I I did. Uh, you know, they said you'll be the class leader. I said okay, but I would keep telling people, "Hey, don't waste time. These two years are going to fly. Keep studying, keep growing, keep learning." And and these guys are very, very, very casual, right? Uh, very good at heart, right? They're very good. They really love ministry. They love to serve people. They're very hardworking, you know, guys. Uh, very, very hardworking. Very strong. Uh, you know, physically they would really do anything for the ministry you wake them up at 3 a.m say we have to take boxes of books and go to this other place they are ready to do it right uh, but when it came to learning when it came to studying uh, they always said, oh that's okay we will learn it slowly and what happened was after the two years uh, they went back home and they realized hey uh, most of them, after going back home, the, their, their parents were pastors. They had their own church. So all of a sudden, they're associate pastors in the church. Now, as an associate pastor, every Sunday you need to preach sermons, prepare sermons, counsel people. People are going, and they were taken aback, meaning they, they really they began to fear, oh, this is real ministry. And I remember they would all call me and say, you know, Paul, you used to tell us this. Uh, I hope that I can come back and join. And most of them are, uh, you know, uh, also completed their uh, third year with us uh, online. Why? Because, uh, you know, sometimes you keep telling people it doesn't go into them. And I remember there was a time when I just said, okay, I've shared enough, I've told enough, I'll continue to do what I am doing. Uh, it's not being selfish. I'm not being, uh, you know, it's not being used. It's just falling on deaf ears. Just move on. Look at somebody else or uh, train, teach somebody else uh, who is willing to learn. Guard against greed. Demonstrate contentment without complacency. Proverbs fifteen twenty seven. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. Now, uh, this is both in the corporate and in the ministry. Uh, as a leader, you and I have a position where people look up to us. Now, when people look up to us, we also have positions of finances. We have uh, you know, access to resources, to material, to people, to uh, anything. Because as leaders, especially if we are high up, right, uh, we have a lot of resources. Right, and one of the best things that has caused the downfall of great leaders is greed. Right, greedy for more money, greedy for fame, greedy for publicity, greedy for uh, you know competition, for winning a competition, or, or, or greedy for selfish interests, personal gains, corruption, and the moment we become begin to be, be, be greedy, we forget about other things, right? We open our lives to dishonest practices. And it's like giving the enemy a door. So guard against greed, walk in contentment. Uh, there will be people in the ministry who are doing wonderful, wonderfully well. Their ministries may be growing and growing and growing and We may be here saying, hey, we are still this. We're not going. And yes, we need to look at ways that we can reach out and cause, you know, God said that he's going to build his church, he's going to add people, and all that is wonderful, right? But never come to a position where you say, you know, how come this person has, and I don't have, this person has all the luxuries in ministry, or in or in business, but I don't have it. He's done the same thing. I've done the same thing. How come? Why is there a difference? And when we open our hearts to these kind of things, greed comes in, right? And greed will result in, you know, competition. Uh, 
um, it will result in you know uh, uh, really just strife and jealousy and all these things will begin begin to creep up right now <clears throat> we need to be careful being content is good but contentment is not laziness now for example you start a business you start an organization or ministry you start off with 10 people over 10 years you get, you get a thousand people right it's wonderful i will thank you know god has been working and your business also has been growing whatever it is but you don't become complacent in a way that we say okay enough that's it uh, i've done what i have to do uh, so complacent is not laziness right we uh, 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 should not lead us to a place of just being satisfied where we are it should lead us or uh, leaders are responsible for growth and development of an organization so there's always continuous growth right yes we look back and we you know we think of the victories that we have won we think of how god has been faithful uh, but we always look ahead always look ahead for, for development right the organization does well and prospers everyone benefits including the leader right so guard against greed and when we do that you know uh, people in your organization will notice it they will notice hard attitudes and easily be seen right next point stay away from women and wine proverbs 31 3 to 5 don't spend all your energy on sex and all your money on women they have destroyed kings listen lemuel kings should not drink wine or have a craving for alcohol when they drink they forget the laws and ignore the rights of people in need now this is written by a person uh you know by a person who's enjoyed everything in life being the king solomon he he enjoyed everything of flesh he was prosperous he had enough money he had women he had wine he had everything at his disposal and here are two things that he says he says stay away from women and if it's women say you know married women uh, away from men and stay away from wine things that intoxicate us two things that have brought great leaders down on their knees crumbled down ministry is women and wine right always maintain a healthy um, women always maintain right and uh, right you do understand you know things are changing cultures are changing hey what's wrong with you know uh, uh, what i'm doing we may think that way now it's not wrong but as leaders as leaders right we must stay away from it stay away from it right uh, <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we personally do uh, uh, is it's man's greeting uh, a, a, a woman, a simple shake hand. Right now, you may say, "Oh, I know this girl for past fifteen years, twenty years." It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. If you are married and you know this, you know if you know another girl for the past twenty years, you may be childhood friends. It does not matter because you need. You and I need to be faithful to our wife, and same thing goes with the women, right? Uh, so, as leaders, we need to guard ourselves, be wise. And I've shared, you know, many many stories. So, uh, uh, always maintain healthy distances in everything, right? You know, whether it's alcohol, whether it's women, men, uh, stay away, right? Have healthy distances. Um, now, what if there's a time, and especially this happens in a corporate sector where, uh, you know, they, they have these team meetings and they go out for the, or these team parties. Everyone go out, everyone are drinking, say, hey, why aren't you drinking along with us? Have an orange juice. Yeah. I remember 
just so weird. We, we, we go to these parties and uh, they'll be drinking and enjoying themselves. Many times I don't want to go, but as I mentioned, like there, there were two of us who were like really good top in our team, top performers. My team manager said, you have to come. I know that you are, you know, this Bible and all of that, but you have to come. You don't have to you know, involve in any drinking. And I respected my managers because they gave me so much of opportunities. I said, okay, I will come. Uh, but the moment I feel uncomfortable or I feel that I should go, I will go. He said, okay, but you come. Uh, so I remember going and uh, we went to this resort. And the moment we reached, everyone said, okay, let's start drinking. They all started getting all the liquor. Everything possible was there on that table. And, uh, you know, they all started they drinking and they said, okay, Paul, you should try it and all of those things. Nobody's here. You know, Jesus is not watching. It's all right. So they made a lot of fun of me. Uh, but it didn't really matter. They, I remember, said, you want me to drink something? Okay, I'll have an orange juice. And, and I had orange juice a day. Uh, and they were all drinking. And after the entire day, right, about five or six of them came up to me and I said, and said to me, whatever you believe in about Jesus and about, you really believe in it. I don't know, I don't believe in it, but you really believe in it. You had the option of, you know, drinking and just enjoying this one day. You were the top performer in the, in the, the, in our team, but you really believe in whatever you believe. And that's wonderful. So, you know, the team was, I was really glad that God helped me uh, to really be a light where there was darkness, to really stand for him. Right? Of course, there were others who were ridiculing and mocking. Uh, but wherever you get a chance, stay away from drinking, right? social drinking. You don't have to go. But there will be times when you have to be there. You'll be a testimony. Right? Uh, next one. Stay God controlled and God directed. Proverbs 21 and 1. Sorry, 21 and verse 1. Good leadership is a channel of water controlled by God. He directs it. Now, ultimately, uh, a leader, as a leader, learn to be God controlled and God directed. How can we be God controlled and God directed? We have the Holy Spirit inside us. We have the gift, we have the fruit of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So these are the, the you begin to you know flow, you walk in the in the fruit of the spirit. And remember that you can also be God directed. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways, though he falls. He shall not be cast down. You are here as a leader to best serve the organization, stay yielded and surrender to God, and God will choose to make you a blessing wherever you are. You are here to release the purposes of God on earth. So uh, even as we, as leaders, whenever, whichever sphere of influence we may be in, uh, stay God-controlled and God directed. Let God control your lives. Let God direct you. And some of, some of the ways is just continuing, you know, always having this daily habit of prayer and meditation. Let him direct you through his word. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there to lead us. Uh, stay controlled, self-control, which is one of the hard attitudes of a good leader. So we begin to walk in this. Right? So we come to a close on leadership. There's so much more to learn on leadership, and we learn a little more in the third year. We'll talk about discipleship and leadership as well. Uh, uh, but let's you know, walk in these attributes, right, as leaders. Okay, next one. Uh, let's get into uh, chapter 14, which is marketing, brand building, and selling. Now, this may be a little more on the corporate side, but let's see how we can translate this in, even in uh, ministry. All right, El, any questions before I go ahead? Okay. Okay, let's get into marketing, brand building, and selling. Now, 
uh, especially if you have your own business, if you have your own uh, you know business in the corporate sector. Uh, we know marketing, building your brand is is very important. Right, uh, it, uh, in a world that, where there's so much competition, uh, you know, for example, you want to start an online uh, online store. Everyone can go online and buy. Now you know one is you need a good brand. Two is think brand building, and then you look at also the competition is there, right? Uh, so you're going up against these big companies. So uh, what is the edge that you are giving as your in your organization? So to survive and to prosper in today's competitive global environment, we need to have strategic marketing, brand building. Setting right, so let's look at a few points. Right, uh, marketing communications describe your product and serve accurately. Proverbs 12 19 A lie has a short life, but truth is on forever. Now, a small interpretation or an exaggeration of your product or service, and if it's done inaccurately, will alter the effect of marketing. How many of you, you know, you buy something online, or you go to a, uh, uh, for example, you go to a, a restaurant, a new restaurant. You say uh, a meal for uh, a family costs, for example, one thousand rupees right? for the entire fam Four of them in a family, a meal costs thousand rupees, um, uh, and so this was what was advertised. This is what was marketed. And so we get there, we you know say, hey, we want that family package meal. You're sitting, you finish your meal, and then you get the bill, and the bill says thousand five hundred. So you'd be wondering, hey, but they said it's thousand. So you you ask the manager, why why is it extra? Oh no, because what happens is uh, uh, this additional five hundred is two hundred is taxes, two hundred is waiting charges. And another hundred is, uh, you know, for your car parking, for the valet parking, something. Like that. And what's going to happen? It is inaccurate, exaggerated information that has been, uh, you know, uh, advertised. So all statements. Be truthful about your sales. Be truthful about market communications. All statements must be uh, substantiated when asked for. Right. So, for example, in ministry, you make a statement. You say these are the things that we will do. It better be substantiated, meaning it, it better be done the right way, since you already said it. Why? Because as a ministry, you're building the ministry. Right. We cannot afford to be slack in those small areas, especially when you start off in a ministry. And it needs to be good, good building. I wouldn't say market marketing, but the the church as a brand, as a as as a brand, you're building that right. So uh, there's no marketing, there's no selling. But uh, when it comes to building a ministry, you know, keep your words right. Keep your words, whatever you say, do it right. So, for example, you say church starts 10 a.m. Uh, and then you have this new family comes and then it's 10 15 you haven't started what happens so hey you said 10 a.m now the message may be wonderful the worship may be anointed of god all of that is good that's what is important but to other people why didn't you start at 10 a.m that is important for them but for you you and i the worship is important word is important yes very true but for others, hey, 10 a.m., you didn't start at 10 a.m., you start at 10 15. And so you can begin a service. The pe pe people who are coming say, Why did they start at 10 15? And they said 10 a.m. And so through the entire service, they can, you know, they'll be so disinterested. Right? Or this question will be, you know, in their mind, Why did they start at 10 So, while you're building a ministry, building an, uh, uh, an organization, building a church, Make sure you do the small things right. To build your brand, a good name and a reputation, uh, money will follow. Proverbs 22 1. 
if you have to choose between a good reputation and great wealth, choose a good reputation. Focus on establishing a good name for yourself in the market. Focus on establishing a good name in the ministry. Right? Wealth and all the other resources will follow. Right? And, uh, you know, there are plenty of verses uh, when, it, when it comes to ministry, right? It says, uh, the Lord shall supply all our needs right? according to his riches and glory. Uh, but what, there will be times you will have to make tough choices uh, where you choose to protect your organization or to protect your ministry or to you know just gain something for a, a personal gain and put the entire organization at risk. Uh, creating a brand that in people's mind represents values of quality, excellence, integrity, creativity, etc. Now this may take time. It's not like in one year people say, oh this is you know this is the best. No. It, it takes time, uh, but careful as we work on this. You know, one of the things I have noticed, right, with a lot of traveling in North India, which we used to do, we went all over North India. And, uh, and we would go for these conferences. And, and I was always, you know, intrigued by something. Uh, wherever we go, there would be, you know, these conferences. Would be, well, I'm talking about 2010 onwards. We have 300 pastors, 250 pastors. At times there were 400, but in some places there were 150, 200. So there was always people. And we did very minimal, uh, you know, promotions because we did, but it was mostly online. Or we put those pamphlets and just share it with pastors. But people would come. 300 pastors, uh, or these youth uh, conferences that we should have, we should have like 200, 300. I always think about it. So many times I would uh, you know, ask pastor, well, how is it, how is it that see, you don't know Hindi? Uh, we preach English. It's not like there are not no uh, pastors in North India. There are plenty of them. And uh, you know, people who are speaking in their regional language would prefer to listen to a regional language preacher, right? their own language. But here we are, coming from another city, going to another city, preaching in English with a translator, but you got so many people. And I always thought to myself, how? Yeah? It is because, you know, I, I, after a lot of conversations, uh, it is because during the early years of ministry, you know, uh, they went to North India, right, and did these conferences with 50, 30, 40 people. But the vision was there. The brand was built in the right way, meaning there was no false teachings, there was no uh, doing things for personal gains, nothing. You know, in many places, they don't know who's. The leader who's the senior pastor they don't even know it they just know the name and there, i remember this time i, uh, I think i was in indore uh, uh, which is one of the states in north india i went there and they didn't even know who's they thought you know they just thought that you know uh, uh, there was a group of us they thought okay we have all they know is this team is coming from apc that's it but there were hundreds of people sitting there now how is that? That was because a good name and a reputation built will last forever. It will last. And, uh, and even, even now, anytime, if, if you know, pastor decides, okay, let's go to this uh, state, we'll do a conference, there will be people. They will come because they know over time, over years, 15, 20 years uh, of just being faithful, being true to the ministry, a good name, good reputation, protecting the, uh, the ministry, uh, you know, creating uh, value, integrity, just, you know, walking in these values has caused it. And we will reap the benefits in due time. Okay, starting now, Look 10 years down the line, right? 
Don't look at now what's happening. Look 10 years down the line. Okay, I will reap the benefits of my faithfulness, of my of the way I build this organization. I got a choice. I can try to use devious methods or I can protect the organization, have a good name, good reputation. Book of Proverbs says that if you have to choose between good reputation and great wealth, many times people choose great wealth first. But the writer here, Solomon, full of wisdom, says choose a good reputation first. Money will follow. Later on, things will fall into place. Right? So next one, protect your band, brand. A little foolishness can destroy good reputation. Ecclesiastes 10.1 Dead flies can make a whole bottle of perfume stink, and a little stupidity can cancel out the greatest wisdom. And look at this. You know, it's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes has so much. You speak of our stink, and a little stupidity can cancel out the greatest wisdom. It takes a long time to build a good reputation, a good name. But one mistake or one thing that is done foolishly can tear apart the entire organization. Right? This tear apart. Protect your brand carefully. Protect what God has given you in your hands. Everyone on the team has a role to play. Check on people. As a leader, you know, counter checks. Ensure there's credibility. Ensure there's uh, good reputation. Things are maintained. You know, uh, especially if you are leading a business, leading an organization. We talked about this, right? Don't choose people immediately as leaders. Let them go through their season of training. See if they have been faithful. See if they are able to, uh, you know, do the smallest of things. Check their hard attitudes. What, and then you give them leadership. Yes, they may have a lot of skills. They may have a lot of uh, ability, and they're ready to become leaders. But most often, leaders don't do that. They take their people through a process of training. Process of, you know, hey, be faithful, and then. Protect your brand. Check for credibility and and whether they are doing well, right? Uh, uh, when it comes to marketing, don't cheat people. Don't deceive people. Now it's very sad, very very sad. You know, a clip of uh, yeah. Somebody sent me a clip of this video of these pastors and uh, these so-called prophets this is all happening in different countries uh, uh, it's not yet i'm not sure if it's happening in our nation but happening in different countries well pastors are saying these prophets are saying until you put a two thousand dollar seed uh i cannot pray for you because you're coming empty-handed and then there was another one where this preacher says there's a prophet right self-proclaimed prophet he says uh the Lord Jesus is not yet come, come to say, uh, the rapture is not yet happening because people are not giving to the Lord. Right? And so all these kinds of things, and uh, you know, it's deceiving people. And we are not called to deceive people, whether it's ministry, whether it is uh, in, in business. Right? Guard your uh, intent. Uh, and okay, next one. Advertisements avoid sexual, suggestive, prov provocative, and indecent kind. Right? So people's mind are not a garbage dump. Uh, it's not a place where we always suggest these sexually uh, active things that are happening. Be wise in your advertisements, the way we do your, especially in the corporate sector, be wise, be mindful. Um, right, and how we do just because of certain gain, you want publicity, you want the, you know, wrong methods, sexually suggestive 
uh, provocative kind of uh, advertisement. Stay away from it. Your next one, your unique sales proposition must be well expressed. Proverbs 25, 11, an idea well expressed is like a design of gold set in silver. So basically, your your unique sales proposition, your USP, right, should be must be well expressed. So if you've got a business, uh, this is your unique selling or sales proposition. Express it. There's nothing wrong in advertising something that you're good at, right? but express it in the right way to capture people's attention and communicate it effectively. Right? Now, it is not how much you say, but what you say that matters. Right? Proverbs 15, 23, man has joy by the answer of his mouth. The word spoken in due season, how good how good it is now it's not how much we can say but what you say that matters that's a nice saying right the right word at the right time can bring all the difference to an organization right it's not really how much you sell now, i remember uh, in the early i think in the late 90s or mid 90s uh, there used to be this ad. Uh, forget uh, uh, you know the details of the ad, but one thing I do remember that ad did not have even one word, right? It was, uh, and we would wait for this very nice music to it, and it was uh, it was a you know the ad of a tire, the car tires, and then they, these cars are just going really fast and they're going in water they're going in slushy areas uh, it was all pictures right and, and there was this music intriguing music and it was a very catchy music and not a word right and then that car would come and stop and this man would get off and he'd be suited up and with a with a, in a suitcase walking into his office right now the pictures are so different it was a big car you know with big tires and uh, but the least thing you expect is somebody coming out with a suit, uh, you know, uh, going into a corporate office. At the end, in the name of the tire. Bought it. People bought the ad. Right? They just took it. People took it. Uh, and as kids, I remember we loved watching that ad. Even though we didn't want to buy tires for any reason. But we loved watching it. Because there was something about it. So there was this unique selling point. When you capture people's attention, it's not always about how much you say. It's how you get what you say and how you get their attention. Right? Uh, next one, don't overdo your selling. Watch what you say. Uh, so uh, resist the temptation of overdoing the selling. Uh, just do what you have to do. Do it right. Uh, uh, you cannot get away with lies for too long. We talked about that, right? So don't lie about your product. Don't lie about things that we are teaching or preaching and doing in the ministry as well. Uh, for a while, we may you know, get away with it. But over time, those lies will be exposed. Proverbs 12, 19, the truthful lip shall be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Right? Uh, so just you know, uh, say the truth. Let the truth, uh, you know, uh, resonate in whatever we are doing. Cut out smooth talking and flattery. Don't fall for it either. We always say this, right? Don't give it. Don't take it. Uh, sometimes, if we are going to a customer meeting, right, or we are selling a product, we're going to another office. We need to talk to them about our product. Oh, we can flatter we can smooth talk not a doubt this talk about your product talk of the talk about the pros of your product uh whether even in ministry right uh, cut out smooth talking and flat oh you are the best preacher of ever nobody can get prophesied like you nobody else can preach like you nobody else can worship like you uh you're the greatest ever after jesus 
uh, all of that is not required, right? Uh, then we sometimes flatter others, uh, we smooth talk others, avoid all of that. Right? Just be genuine. Uh, and when people are flattering you, don't fall for it. Oh, yes, I'm the greatest. They say, God, people are you know appreciating you, flattering you. Just say, okay, thank you, praise God. Leave it, move on. You won't have to sit and linger on it. Oh, they all said this. You don't have to do that. Your words, this is the most powerful thing. Your words must be backed your work. Proverbs 12, 14, well-spoken words bring satisfaction. Well done work has its own reward. Back up your words with your words. What I did this, I did this. I was able to start this ministry. I was able to start this business. And now, now you know, we grew up to this place. And then we did this and this. Back it up. Right? Or if you say, you know, I want to do this in ministry in the next five years, I want to see this happening. I want to see my business taking this kind of a change in my the corporate sector. Uh, and it will happen. These are the things we'll change. Uh, back it up by your work. Because it's easy to speak, but to get things done is secondary. It's easy for me to say, I want 200, 300 people in church. But I got to back it up. What must I do? Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time in God's word. Ask God for wisdom to, uh, you know, do the right kind of ministry, right? Uh, and uh, learn to have all these godly attitudes in whatever I'm doing. Uh, there's so much to learn. I can't just say I want to do this and then do nothing about it. A greater call, a greater sacrifice, right? Uh, sheep can thrive among wolves. If they stay wise and pure. At Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is when Jesus uh, sent out the twelve to evangelize, to reach out, to share the gospel. It was a risky task because already Jesus was being persecuted in Jerusalem. They didn't like him. They didn't want him. They didn't want to hear of him. All they wanted was the miracles. Now he's sending his disciples and he's saying, you go, there's a risk. There are wolves They can, and you are sheep. They can eat you up. But if you be wise, you will know how to handle them. The word harmless literally means unmixed or, uh, you know, being sincere, being simple, uh, being uh, uh, pure, right? Uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's just, so even I, this world, in the corporate sector, we look at this, what's happening. Uh, there are wolves all around trying to just bring us down. But you and I can be sheep and we can thrive in that place. They come back. The disciples come back. What report do they give? Lord, in your name, everything's happening. Whatever you did, thrived. Initially, and then later on, we see after the Holy Spirit, they climbed even more after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just give me one minute, I'll just finish these two points. Negotiations patiently, gently press towards an agreement, right? Uh, while making negotiations, stay calm, don't be, uh, you know, don't get angry or don't say this, you know, remain fair, be kind, be gracious, be gentle. Uh, don't place unreasonable demands. Uh, sometimes these demands are ridiculous. They don't even make sense. So making agreements, make it in the right way that both parties uh, can agree to it. Those can be mountain, sorry, those can be opened. Mountains can be leveled. This can happen supernaturally, right? Whatever the market conditions are, whatever things that are happening around us, we look at ministry as well. Uh, Things may be happening around us, but you and I, uh, you know, must remember that supernaturally God is working, right? So we'll stop here uh, and we'll pick up from next class on Wednesday. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day ahead and I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless. Thank you.